Let's start by laying out all of our pieces. We have the front of the bag. We have two pieces, a long piece, which we're gonna be folding in half, and a short piece, which we'll be folding in half. We have the back pieces, which are both the same size. There's a back piece, there's a lining piece, and we have a same size fusible fleece for in the center. And then we have a back pocket, nice and long, so it'll be folded in half as well. We have our zipper, our strap, pins, and definitely our seam upper. Let's pull out our sewing machine and get started. If you have a print that you're particular about, make sure you lay it out first to see how it's going to lay. So when I'm done with my bag, the fold for the bottom top is gonna be here. The fold for the top top is gonna be here. And then my zipper is gonna be in between. I love this purple butterfly, so I'm trying to keep him on top. And then I like how the blue butterflies are here for my bottom. Start with the short tops piece. Fold it in half lengthwise with the right sides together. I like to press with an iron here so that I have a really good crease. I am going to place my zipper in here with the zipper pull up just like that. Right snug along the fold. I like to place a few pins in here so that I keep this in place as I'm sewing so that it stays up snug against there. And I also like to place those pins going in the direction that I'm going to be um, sewing so that I can take them out as I get to them. I want my zipper pull on the left. As you can see, my zipper pull is up top. I am using a zipper foot to stitch my zipper in place. The groove goes over the zipper and I like to position my needle about a quarter of an inch away from the zipper. Pull up your threads and stitch removing the pins as you go. My zipper foot left groove works such that the fold of my fabric is lined up with the right side edge of the foot. Now I can turn the top so that the wrong sides are together. I pin them in place so that I can top stitch later. The bottom of the front piece is now folded in half, right sides together, and we repeat the steps for the zipper. Press the fold, Place the zipper, lining up the edges of the front bottom and top pieces on the sides and the zipper on the fold. I like to pin it well so that it, when it goes into the machine, I can remove those pins as I go. Next, we're going to bring both the bottom front and top front so that we are wrong sides together. Press close to the zipper and pin so that we can top stitch next. To top stitch with my zipper foot, I am now using the right sided groove. This allows me to end up with a stitch line that is about an eighth of an inch from the fold of my fabric. This is the pocket piece. I have folded it in half, wrong sides together. I have switched back to my regular foot and I like to position my needle so that I can follow the right side edge of my presser foot. So I have positioned my needle so that I am one quarter of an inch away from the fold of the pocket. Feasible fleece has a soft side and a bumpy side. The bumpy side is the glue side and that is what needs to go to the wrong side of the back of your fabric. Iron it in place. The corners seem to always take the longest. <music> For 
first thing we want to do is put down the back part of the back of our purse. Then we're going to place the pocket on top. We're going to be able to make lines um, to create different pockets here. I'm going to use a three inch line simply so that I can have room to put my cell phone. I figured this out by placing my cell phone in there just to make sure that I have enough space so that it'll fit snugly but loosely in my purse. I'm going to use a friction pen to mark this line. Friction pens will disappear with heat. And so once I iron that purse, the line will go away. I'm going to pin this in place so that all the layers will stay together and not shift as I sew. I like to put the pins in in the direction that I'm going to be sewing so that I can pull them out as I go. At the very top of the pocket, I'm going to make sure that I put a backwards and forwards stitch there just to reinforce that point. Sew directly on your marked line. Go forwards and backwards at the top of that pocket to reinforce because that will definitely be an area of stress. I like to put my strips together for the straps using a 45 degree angle. I place one strip down and the next strip is going to go right sides together perpendicular on that bottom strip. I place my ruler so that I can determine that I'm going in the right direction. Once I know I'm going in the right direction, I can use my friction pen to mark that point. You can also go straight across. You don't need to do a 45 degree angle. So I make sure that my corner is right and then I use my friction pen to mark my line. I can now pin this in place, take it to the sewing machine, and I will stitch directly on that line. All that's left to do here is to trim the tails, press it open, and now you have one long strip. Start by folding the strap in half long ways. Then fold in the edges toward the middle and press again. Now that my strap is folded, I'm going to do a top stitch on either side. So I have moved my needle over as far as I can and I'm sticking my strap straight in the center of my pressure foot and I'm going to stitch all the way down both sides. Now I'm going to layer everything together. I'm going to start with the lining of the back of the bag. I'm placing that the right side down onto my table. Then I'm going to take the back and I'm placing the wrong side to the wrong side, just like that. Okay. Next, I need my strap. And so I'm going to place my strap so that I'm a half an inch from each side. Right, and I like to pin my straps in place just so that I have them. And they're not going to move around on me as we do this. I am eyeballing this half an inch. I can certainly bring in my ruler just to double check and make sure I'm okay. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Once I've pinned these part these straps in place, I can bring this part, the front part right sides together with my zipper half open and pin it in place. So I'm going to start at the top, making sure that my straps are already in there nice and neat. 
and I pin a lot for this because there are already a lot of layers. When I get over here, I'm trying to make sure all edges are matching. If you have a point where things are not matching up, don't worry about it. You can trim them um, or get them out of your way. All right, so here I am pulling the straps outside of the zipper. That way they completely stay out of my, my way. And I'm lining up the bottom part of here. And I'm gonna continue to pin all the way around. By keeping the strap on the outside of my bag, I make sure that I keep this zipper open. I need that zipper open so that when I go all the way around the bag, I have some place that I can turn it out inside out. And then I also make sure that I'm not gonna catch the zipper in my stitches while I'm going around. It's a little bit on the bulky side, but um, you'll be glad that you did when you're done. Just to be on the safe side to make sure that I catch all the layers in the bag, I have moved my needle stitch over so that I do a 3 8 of an inch seam. I'm starting on the bottom of the bag. I'm gonna pivot at the corners. So once I get to the corner, and I feel like that's where I wanna turn, I put my needle down into the fabric. That way I can turn the bag and not lose it. Seems like I need to go a couple more stitches. Now I'm lined back up with the edge of my presser foot. And I can continue sewing. Now that I'm getting to the zipper, I take it super slow. And then I use the hand wheel to go over the teeth. That way I can have time for the teeth to move out of the way where I have the zipper. Saves a lot of needles. If you're having problems going over a lot of thicknesses of fabric, um, a walking foot or dual feed foot can really help. I haven't found it necessary with these bags to have to have that. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn my bag over, make sure I caught all the fabric on the other side. I think I'm gonna go over that corner one more time just to make sure I have everything in place. I need to take off my zippers before I turn it inside out. Always use some paper scissors or some scissors that you're not happy, you know, that are not wonderful for using. These are your old pair of scissors that no longer work. And then just pull it inside out. Grab the pocket there. I'm going to open it up just a little bit. There we go. All right, here she comes. She's adorable. Oh, my butterflies are in exactly the right place. And I can keep fiddling with it to get these corners out just a little bit more, um, but that gives you the idea. Nice little pocket on the back. Fits my cell phone perfectly. Have at it.